happy belated birthday. And what better way to ce uh, celebrate with like the number one show all over the world? Crazy, crazy. I could not be more thankful because I did not, I knew it was going to do well, but that well, I mean, I don't, you don't want to set yourself up for disappointment. So it was just like when it came, I was like, okay, wow, this is happening. <laughs> it, it was like one of those things I sat down and I was like, I'll check out this show and then cut to, I finished the whole thing in one sitting and I'm like in a puddle of tears. It's just <laughs> some of the freshest, best comedy I've seen in a long time. And then it just like gut punches you in the end. It's such a great show. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people were expecting that from Mindy, you know, coming from the office and things like that, but it is, it's not just laughter. It touches on some real life stuff and um, I'm, I'm really happy how they accomplished that. Now, is it strange having this like sudden, just like uptick in, in fans from quarantine? Like you haven't really been able to like go out, right? And have people just like coming up to you and saying stuff, or if they do, you're like, 60, please. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I think maybe it worked out well because I did not obviously expect, um, I, I knew the show was gonna be, you know, a hit and, and do well, but I didn't expect my character to get so much attention. Mm -hmm. And so that happening, like social media following has been through the roof and all that is, you know, it's, it's really, really cool. But um, I don't, it, I'm, it's almost better maybe it happened that way because it's, it's a smoother adjustment to it. Whereas I did actually go for a run the other day and I got recognized and I'm so not used to that. And they were like, I heard them like saying, that's him, that's him. And I was like, there's no way they're talking about me right now. And I turned around, they were both pointing at me and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it, I'm thankful, but if like, you know, it's probably better, this is like an easier transition into that, you know, happening. So, yeah. yeah. Now, are, are you from LA originally? Yeah, I grew up here uh, until I was 12, and then um, lived in Orlando, Florida for a while, Miami, and then um, up, in, up in Northeast Georgia in the middle of nowhere, and then Atlanta, and then back home. Wow, so to kind of grow up here and then take that drive down iconic Sunset Boulevard and see your face. Like, what is that, what did that feel like? <laughs> so I used to live um, on Sunset Boulevard at the time with my sister and brother-in-law. And I worked at Soul Cycle at the, uh, near the Sunset, or the Sunset Plaza in West Hollywood. Been there. And yeah, and I, I would, um, you know, I'd walk to work every day to avoid, you know, like a paying a parking fee. There was like a $2 parking fee. And I was like, I don't want to pay it. So I'm going to save money. And I walk a mile every day. And I'd be walking past all the billboards and ads for shows and just be like, you know, I, I, I wanted it so bad. Like, I can't explain how much I dreamed of like seeing my face on a billboard or just, or even not my face, but just a show I was a part of and see it posted up, you know? Yeah. So the other day I was walking past that apartment or driving past that apartment and saw the billboard right in front of it. And it was the most surreal moment ever because that was four years ago I would, where I would, would have said like, it's impossible, you know? Right. So it was really cool. Well, what advice would you give to people who are kind of feeling maybe how you were feeling a few years back? Realize, I mean, you got to realize that this takes time and you have to, I, I think you really have to evaluate if you're, if, if it's worth your time, you know? And, and that means I think doing it for the right reasons. I, I came to the point where I realized there was nothing, I was nothing else I was gonna be happy doing. So I was willing to do this and struggle and potentially never make it until the day I died. You know, it was like, that's how bad I want it. Um, but also just, you know, realize you're enough and don't let, don't let this town change you. You know, a lot of times you're pulled in every direction. Like you feel like you got to look like this guy or act like that guy, or just like this guy or girl, or whatever. And um, you can lose yourself doing that. And then the pursuit isn't worth it at that point, I think, so. Yeah, there's definitely like a lot of people that tell you to uh, like change yourself in certain ways and you have to kind of stick to, stick to your guns a little bit, you know? Yeah, and that's, that, I think that makes you stand out and makes you you and makes you more, you know, hireable in, in, in my eyes. This show is so special because, you know, I've seen, I, I mean, I've seen my culture on TV a thousand different ways, a million different times. And then to see this Indian American family at the core of this show, I mean, what does that mean to you to be a part of a, a, of a project like that? I love that this show is so diverse and it touches on so many real life topics, but, and I've said this before, is just, I, what I love is that it's not preachy about it and it's not so on the nose about it. and. Because there's, there's a lot of shows that I watch and it's just like, you can tell that the whole message of the show is like, I'm a minority and this is my struggle and this is why life is hard. And that's what mm -hmm. the entire story is going to be about. Where it's to the point where you're just like, 
it's like a violin is playing, you know, and it's like, I get it, but like this show, what I love about it is that it's just merely a fact about each character. You know, it's, Davy being Indian is not her identity. It's not her definition. It's just a fact about her. And it touches on how she struggles with that identity, not being Indian enough or being too Indian or whatever. But there's so many other things going on that it doesn't ever just pinpoint focus on that type of stuff. So I'm honored because it, I think it, I think it's more of a real life depiction on characters like that. You know, yeah. like no character going through life is like, oh, I'm a minority and my whole life sucks because I'm a minority and that's my whole story. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's I, more real to me. I was reading that your character actually changed a little bit after you were cast. Can you talk a little bit about how Paxton evolved once you got the role? Yeah, that was really cool actually. I was in wardrobe fitting with uh, Salvador Perez and our AD Yuko was there. And um, I knew by her name that she was Japanese. So I started conversing with her in Japanese. My, my mom is um, Japanese, grandmother spoke Japanese to me and I took it in school for two years. So I love to practice it anytime I can. And I guess uh, Sal told Lang and Mindy I was doing that. And Lang came up to me and was like, hey, are you uh, speaking in Japanese with Yuko? And at first I thought I was like in trouble because we went through like sensitivity training with Universal and they were like, don't mimic people. Don't do this, don't do that. And I was like, yeah, but like, I'm part <laughs> like, Japanese. Don't do and she was like, oh, do you mind if we make your character part Japanese? And I was like, yeah. So the next thing I knew there was a hyphenated Yoshida at the end of the name. <laughs> That's awesome. How do you feel like you are the most like Paxton and how do you feel like you're the least like Paxton? I think I'm the most like Paxton in the sense that um, I've, I can relate to being a book judged by your cover. Um, and also having, you know, before people know you, having, you know, them jab at your in intelligence. I can't relate to Paxton in the sense that <clears throat> I was not, I didn't have an extreme apathy towards school. I was a straight A student. I was in like all college classes. I was, um, you know, my, and I never went to one party. I never drank a sip of alcohol, like nothing mm -hmm. like that. Uh, very, very strict mother. Uh, and in a great way, I love it because it, she pushed me so hard, but um, I can also relate to, you know, Paxton, just um, a book judged by his cover, but also having a real heart of gold underneath. And I mean, like I was, I was always trying to stand up for the little guy and, and um, you know, re I made friends with everyone possible. And, um, but yeah, he's, uh, there were a lot of people that were like, oh, not, not that they would call me stupid, but would, when I would, you know, they would see like me, you know, do something intellectual, they'd be like, Oh, you're actually smart. You know, right. like, wow. Okay, thank you for the backhanded compliment. <laughs> so, can't be hot and smart. <laughs> <laughs> Barely not. I guess it's just you know, science doesn't work that way. The TikToks of people trying to recreate your shirtless scene are pretty great. That's like a moment for me when I saw people, like I saw how many people are doing it. I had no idea that that move was gonna be such like a thing. And kudos to Mindy and them, like they told me, um, they originally wanted me to go, like they were like practice doing it. They wanted me to take it off from behind with one hand and I kept choking myself. So I was like, it's not gonna work this way, man. I'm just gonna, you know, it's going around my neck. So we ended up having, I ended up I was like, how about this way? And I did it with, you know, the other arm. So I was like, they were like, yeah, just do it as fast as you can. So I went home and I was like, whoosh, whoosh. it became like muscle memory. So it was a um, good time. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask, I was like, did you have to practice or is this like a skill you already had? Or <laughs> I still find myself taking my shirt off like that, believe it or not, sometimes when I get home. Like just, I don't know, I did it so many times. It's like I get home completely alone and I'm about to get in the shower. I'm like, I'm like wow, that really still got it. Yeah, still got it. What are your hopes for, for season two? We kind of see Paxton have a big moment of growth at the end. So what, what are you hoping for season two? Which is definitely happening, I assume. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, you, don't, you don't know until the fat lady sings, right? Yeah. But it looks good. Um, I would really, so I, I, I would enjoy, you know, I, I know how you know Ben has an episode diving really into his individual life and explaining him as a character. I think that would be interesting with Paxton, seeing his home life, his, dynamic more so with his sister, his his parents. Um, and then I also think it would be cool like to have somewhat of a role reversal with Davey and Paxton. And what I mean by that is the whole first season, my uh, Davey is chasing Paxton and he's out of the league. 
or so she thinks. And then now he's on her doorstep, pining for her heart at the end of season one. Well, I don't, spoiler alert, but you know, it's, I would love to see season two, like maybe he's too late. And this is the first time in his life he's ever been told no, or, or you know, felt like it, it wasn't easy for him to acquire someone's heart and make them mm -hmm. like him, you know? So to see like kind of an insecure part of Paxton, like maybe he's too late, I don't know what I should do, you know, and, and, and uh, that dynamic would be really interesting.